This is a story of love, betrayal, and redemption. The main character, Henry, finds himself at the center of a whirlwind when his family life is shattered by infidelity. Striving to understand and forgive, he embarks on a quest for justice and seeks truth in a world where even the strongest bonds can be broken by betrayal. Dive into this gripping journey through shattered hearts and disillusionment, where each twist reveals new layers of truth and pain. Despite my lingering suspicions, my love for her remained steadfast. Strange occurrences, unprecedented in our 15 years of marriage, set off alarm bells in my mind. Her style transformed drastically when the new boss assumed control at her office. Suddenly, our domestic life took a turn for the better. She initiated intimacy, a departure from her past behavior. Nighttime texts became routine, as did late meetings after work. Though she offered plausible explanations for each occurrence, my innate jealousy simmered beneath the surface. I instructed the private investigation firm to withhold any findings until their investigation concluded. I hoped against hope that my concerns were merely the product of an overactive imagination. Three months later, I received a comprehensive dossier that shattered my illusions. Video footage, audio recordings, and photographs confirmed my worst fears. Without hesitation, I instructed Grant, my attorney, to initiate divorce proceedings, demanding the papers be prepared by Wednesday afternoon. Unbeknownst to her, I plotted to confront them during their Thursday night tryst, a surprise in store for the illicit couple. Her audacity astounded me, Polly of all people should have known better. She knows me intimately, my intuition, my determination, my unforgiving nature. She witnessed firsthand my ruthlessness in business, how I rose to power, and decimated my competitors. Now, I command a significant stake in a major trucking company, earning the respect of drivers and teamsters alike through fair treatment. I've lavished Polly with everything, treating her like royalty, a fact she probably shares with friends and family. Yet, despite her adoration, she jeopardized it all for a fleeting affair. Why? This question haunts me relentlessly, even in these final hours. Why would she throw away everything we built together? It remains my most haunting inquiry. Polly's actions were baffling, given her role as a dedicated mother and wife, juggling household duties and a full-time job as an executive assistant at a local tech company. She seemed to have it all together. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine she would stray. I'm Henry Cooper. Polly's husband of 15 years and the father of our two preteen daughters who adore their daddy. I fit the archetype of an alpha male, unyielding in demeanor but cherishing my wife as the pro she truly is. Though I possess my father's imposing stature, standing at 6 feet 6 inches and weighing 265 pounds of muscle, I am a gentle giant until provoked. Polly witnessed my protective instincts in action on a couple of occasions when we were out together and she attracted unwanted attention with her long legs, slim waist, and angelic face. She naturally draws admiring glances, fueling my simmering jealousy, a flaw I struggle to rein in. Twice in our 15 years together, my jealousy erupted into action when aggressive men disregarded Polly's refusal and attempted to pull her onto the dance floor. They underestimated my resolve. In those moments, I unleashed my strength, dislocating one man's shoulder and inflicting a concussion on another. I refuse to tolerate disrespect. But my wife knows firsthand the lengths I will go to protect her. Given Polly's familiarity with my protective nature, her decision to engage in an affair raises perplexing questions. Why would she risk everything we've built together, knowing the depths of my loyalty and the extent of my devotion to her? It's a puzzle that continues to haunt me, date night, Thursday. Every detail was meticulously arranged. Accompanied by one of my fixers, I arrived early at the designated location, ensuring a private setting. Generously tipping the hostess ensured they would be seated away from prying eyes. My brilliant wife believed I was out of town, unaware of the trap I was laying. The audio recordings revealed her willingness to rendezvous with her boss on Thursday night. Despite my seething anger, I listened as he eagerly made plans, oblivious to the impending storm. Equipped with software from the PI agency, I monitored Polly's communications, capturing every damning exchange. Each message fueled my fury, particularly his audacious request to pick her up from our home. My plan was simple, 
confront the mid-tryst, delivering a performance that would culminate in a stern warning and the shock of divorce papers. Revenge burned within me, drowning out any sympathy for the pain I knew my actions would inflict. Despite my conviction, a nagging doubt lingered. Deep down, I knew Polly loved me and her children, yet the desire for retribution eclipsed any semblance of compassion. Some may argue for forgiveness, citing our years together and the triviality of a mere affair, but as an immature, jealous alpha male, I refused to let another man defile my wife and maintain his grip on her affections. Though my love for her remained, the betrayal irreparably tainted our connection. With eyes and backup strategically positioned, I awaited the signal indicating the opportune moment. Thursday night arrived, and upon receiving confirmation that the couple had been seated and served, I prepared to confront them. Exiting my car, I entered the restaurant, exchanging pleasantries with the hostess before mustering the composure to execute my plan. As I surveyed the scene, my heart constricted at the sight of the couple. A pang of betrayal mingled with resentment as I beheld my wife, resplendent in a cocktail dress that accentuated her flawless figure, a sight she never bestowed upon me. The inexplicable act fueled my simmering fury, intensifying my determination to unravel the truth. Stealing myself, I approached from the side, their obliviousness fueling my resolve. Polly and her companion remained engrossed in each other, their intimacy a stark contrast to the impending confrontation. With calculated precision, I positioned myself at their table, unnoticed until I pulled a chair from a nearby table, eliciting reactions ranging from shock to guilt upon Polly's face. Addressing her with forced joviality, I feigned ignorance of the situation. Polly's attempt to maintain composure, coupled with her introduction of me to her unsuspecting date, only fueled my disdain. The facade of normalcy shattered as the confrontation commenced. She was a master of deception, I had to give her that, smooth and quick on her feet, she effortlessly veiled her deceit. As my ordered drink arrived, I brushed off Polly's fabrications and raised my glass in a calculated toast. Let's raise our glasses, I declared with a congenial smile, diverting attention from her attempted subterfuge. Here's to an intriguing evening and a new chapter. Turning to her boss Jasper, I engaged him in conversation, feigning ignorance of Polly's transgressions. Jasper, do you know the secret to Polly and my 15 years of blissful marriage? I queried, already armed with knowledge gleaned from the report. Yes, happily married for 20 years with four wonderful children, Jasper replied, echoing my sentiments on the importance of trust and honesty in marriage. Marvelous to hear, Jasper, I remarked turning the spotlight back to Polly. And Polly, would you say you share the same sentiments? Yes, darling, trust and honesty are paramount in our relationship, Polly affirmed confidently, her demeanor betraying no hint of guilt or apprehension. You see, Jasper, our marriage thrives on mutual trust, I continued, watching their discomfort with calculated satisfaction. With each carefully chosen word, I tightened the noose of my game, intent on unraveling their deceit. So, how long have you two been dating? I inquired nonchalantly, a grin plastered across my face. Polly's irritation flared as she attempted to regain control, her tone indignant. Honey, this is strictly a business meeting, she retorted, casting me a reproachful glance. Please refrain from embarrassing me in front of my boss with your baseless jealousy. You know me better than that. Seizing the opportunity, her date chimed in, eager to assert his innocence. Indeed, Henry, this is purely business, he interjected, adopting a conciliatory tone. I needed to discuss some upcoming changes with Polly. I apologize if there's been any misunderstanding, but rest assured, my intentions are purely professional. Feigning contrition, I offered a sheepish apology. I'm sorry for any misunderstanding, I muttered, adopting a chastened demeanor. So, this is just a business dinner then? No romantic entanglements? That's correct, Henry, Polly affirmed, her tone forced. Just business meetings, nothing more. Please, stop this childish behavior. Bowing my head in submission, I continued to play my part. I'm sorry, I murmured, struggling to contain my simmering resentment. Seeing you in that alluring dress, accompanied by this charming man, well, you can understand why I might feel a tad insecure. Jasper's reassurance only served to fuel my resolve. 
Henry, there's no need to apologize, he offered, patting me on the back. If my wife were in your shoes, I'd likely feel the same. As tension dissipated, I signaled to the man observing from the bar with a thick folder in hand. He approached the table, delivering the damning evidence. As I laid out the incriminating photos, I turned to Polly, my voice heavy with sorrow. Polly, I loved you with all my heart, I whispered, my words laced with pain, but you shattered our marriage with your betrayal. I'll never forget the things I saw and heard. Thank you for destroying everything we had. Polly's gasp echoed through the tense silence as her hands flew to cover her mouth. Jasper, visibly enraged, demanded to know the source of the incriminating photos, but I silenced him with a curt command. As I laid out the damning evidence, I took a moment to scrutinize each photo, punctuating the air with pointed remarks. Polly's tears flowed freely now, her pleas for mercy falling on deaf ears as I endeavored to keep our confrontation discreet, mindful of the prying eyes of neighboring tables. Realizing the gravity of her predicament, Polly grasped for a lifeline. I'm sorry, baby, she implored, desperation tainting her voice, let's leave and talk about this. It's not what it seems, I promise. I regarded her with a sardonic smirk, deliberately drawing out my response. Not what it seems, I echoed slowly, my tone laced with disbelief. Are you truly prepared to continue this charade? Know this, both of you, I possess hours of irrefutable evidence, videos, audio recordings, texts, emails, and more. And Polly, after witnessing those videos, I never imagined you capable of such deceit. You hid that side of yourself well, but rest assured, I understand everything now. Gesturing to my associate, I directed him to explain our purpose. With a solemn nod, I presented Polly with the divorce papers, my voice heavy with finality. Polly, our marriage is over, I declared, my words a cold indictment. You and your lover have irreparably damaged my love for you. Tonight, you'll sign these papers, witnessed by our notary friend at the bar. Refuse and I'll expose every sordid detail to your parents, friends, and worst of all, our children. I've been fair in this divorce, but our daughters will live with me. They deserve better than a cheater for a mother. Turning to Jasper, I began, my voice cool and determined, my friend, I suggest you persuade your girlfriend here to sign these papers before I leave. Otherwise, I'll be delivering copies of all the evidence to your wife and your executive team at work. Once I'm done, you'll be out of a job, and Regina will ensure you're ruined financially for a very long time. I'd rather not go down that road, so convince her to sign the divorce papers, and then my soon-to-be ex-wife is all yours. I want nothing to do with that cheating woman ever again. The weight of my words hung heavy in the air, slicing through Polly's defenses. The prospect of losing custody of her daughters added another layer of desperation to her tear-streaked face, while her boyfriend's panic was palpable. Polly's pleas for forgiveness echoed with familiar desperation, empty promises to make amends, explanations, and declarations of love. But I remained unmoved, steeling myself against her emotional onslaught, dismissing her entreaties. I rose from my seat with finality. I'll be heading to the men's room, I announced firmly. When I return, those papers had better be signed. If not, prepare yourselves for a level of hell you can't even imagine. Left alone with her lover, Polly's sobs intensified, her desperation mounting as she grasped for a lifeline. Jasper, sensing the gravity of the situation, acted swiftly. Polly, just sign them, he urged urgently. But ask him to hold on to them for a week. Use that time to convince him you love him, that you'll do anything to salvage your marriage, promise therapy, whatever it takes but make him wait a week, it's the only chance we have. He's serious, and if he has those videos and audios, we're both finished. I don't want a divorce, Polly, trust me. If you can get him to wait, I'm sure you can save your marriage. Think about the children, you don't want to lose the girls, do you? He implored, knowing the gravity of the situation. Her tears flowed anew, and after a few agonizing minutes, I returned to the table. Well, have you signed them yet? I asked, my tone clipped, with a heavy heart. She met my gaze and spoke in a voice laden with sorrow, Honey, I'll do whatever you want, including signing these papers. 
But please, can you give me just one week? One week to be with my girls and talk. After 15 years, please, give me that much. I sat in silence, contemplating her plea. Despite the betrayal, I relented. Even though you deserve nothing from me after what you've done, I'll give you that, I conceded begrudgingly. You can come home, but you'll stay in one of the guest bedrooms. I don't want you near my bed during this time. Now sign them so I can leave. As she signed the papers, I gathered them into the folder and stood to depart. Before leaving, I took her hand in mine, watching as she smiled until I removed her wedding rings, dropping mine into her wine glass. Her crestfallen expression brought a small measure of satisfaction, a fleeting acknowledgement of the pain she'd inflicted. Turning to Jasper, I delivered a final warning. Well, she's your date now. Do what you want with her, I spat, seething with contempt, but remember, you slept with my wife, destroyed our marriage, and endangered a lot, including my children's love for their mother. Your ass is mine, and I have your balls in my hand. Don't cross me. You're lucky I didn't carry out my original plans for you. It's far from over between us, you scumbag. You'll be hearing from me soon. Got it? Jasper nodded silently as I loomed over him, a silent testament to the disruption of their evening plans. As I made to depart, Polly seized my arm, her voice pleading. Henry, can I please come home with you? I just want to be with you, please. I recoiled from her touch as if scorched by fire, my disgust palpable. I have no desire to be seen with a traitor like you, I retorted, my disdain evident. You disgust me. I'm ashamed to have been your husband. Admittedly, I was far from gracious in that moment, but frankly, I didn't care. Despite the tumult of emotions within me, I took pride in my ability to contain my jealousy and anger. I had given her a week to ponder her actions, now it was time to see what would unfold. The following morning, I heard her return home late in the evening, quietly retreating to the guest suite, a tacit acknowledgement of the strained atmosphere between us. The next morning, as we crossed paths in the kitchen, I remained resolute in my determination for retribution. Good morning, cheater, I greeted her coldly, my tone dripping with contempt. How is my cheating wife today? She flinched, her gaze dropping to her coffee cup as she uttered the familiar refrain of every cheating spouse caught in the act. Honey, we need to talk. Listen, there's nothing to discuss, Polly, I interjected, cutting off her attempt at reconciliation. I know everything. I know the extent of your betrayal, the duration of your affair, the disparaging remarks you made about me and our marriage. I witnessed the things you did with him, the way you dressed for him. I heard all the comparisons, all the lies, all the deceit. You took me for a fool, and I can't fathom how foolish you were to believe you could get away with it. Unless there's something I've overlooked, there's nothing left to say. I'm the fool, not you, Polly confessed, tears streaming down her cheeks. I don't know why I let it happen. You gave me everything I ever wanted, and I love you regardless of what you heard in those videos. You have to know I never meant to hurt you and I never wanted you to find out. Exactly my point, Polly, I responded, my voice heavy with disappointment. You never wanted me to find out. You wanted to keep it a secret, to continue lying and sleeping with your lover behind my back. That's the crux of the matter, Polly. I can forgive infidelity, after all, we're all human and make mistakes. But this wasn't a mistake. You chose this, and you chose to keep it a secret, to lie, cheat, and conceal your affair. I love you, Polly, but as Tina Turner says, what's love got to do with it? My trust is shattered, and I'm left wondering if I ever truly knew you. How many other men have there been? How many times have you returned to my bed after being with your lover? I'm so disgusted I can barely find the words. Sobbing now, Polly realized the depth of my pain and the gravity of her actions. There were no more excuses or justifications, only an admission of guilt. Okay, I'm guilty, and I hate myself for it, she admitted, her voice choked with remorse. There was never anyone else, and no matter what I say, I know you won't be able to forgive me for what I've done. But I don't want a divorce. I'll do whatever it takes to stay with you. 
I think I need counseling, and maybe we can go together to figure out what's wrong with me. Please don't leave me. I paused for a moment, considering her plea. Polly, you can go to counseling, do whatever you need to do, and I'll support you, I replied finally, but I can't live with a woman who could discard me so callously. Your actions and the words you said revealed your true feelings, and I can't see a way forward with someone who feels that way about me. I know there are other women out there who would cherish the chance to be with me. You had your opportunity, and you chose to throw it away. Enjoy your week here with the girls, try to explain why you're leaving. I won't speak ill of you, but it's important that you tell them you're leaving and why. I stated firmly in the divorce agreement, I've granted you full access to our daughters at all times, but they will be living with me. However, if you continue to engage in promiscuous behavior and set a negative example for our daughters, I will have to reconsider the terms of your visitations. I'll treat you better than you deserve and help you maintain your relationship with our daughters, but I have two questions for you to consider before you answer. Firstly, why did you risk everything for this? And secondly, was it worth it? The following Monday, I contacted Jasper and arranged to meet him for lunch on Wednesday. After convincing him of the importance of our meeting, I expressed my profound disappointment in how he had contributed to the destruction of my marriage and hinted at the potential consequences. Over lunch, I outlined the repercussions of his actions and detailed my expectations for restitution. You're going to pay for Polly's rent and car payments for the next three years, I declared firmly. Consider it your punishment. You're getting off easy, Jasper. Despite everything, I still care for my cheating wife and want her to be taken care of. Since you played a role in this, you'll comply with my demands. This arrangement will help Polly get back on her feet after I came her out. If you fail to follow through, I'll ensure you lose your job and that Regina learns about your infidelity. Consider it a lifeline, Jasper. This is the consequence of seducing a married woman. People like you need to understand that actions have repercussions. Why not pursue single women instead of tearing apart families? That was a cowardly move, Jasper. Despite my anger and hurt, I made sure to treat Polly with decency, allowing her to visit the children and maintaining a cordial relationship. However, she never managed to regain my respect or trust. Jasper faithfully made his payments every month, knowing the consequences if he failed to comply. Polly struggled to provide satisfactory answers to my questions. While she expressed remorse for her actions and admitted they weren't worth it, she couldn't explain the underlying motivation. Now living alone without a boyfriend and the love she once had, she faced the consequences of her choices. I could have inflicted more pain upon her, but the loss of her family and my love was punishment enough. Despite undergoing counseling, Polly couldn't offer a satisfactory explanation for her actions. Her best attempt was, I don't know why it just happened. It had nothing to do with you or our marriage because I do love you and was happy with our life together. But it was something new and exciting. I screwed up. Unable to contain my frustration, I confronted her. If you were truly happy, why did you dress up and wear provocative clothing for him? Why engage in behaviors with him that you never did with me? It just happened isn't a sufficient answer. You repeatedly chose to pursue this affair and dress to entice him each time, yet you claim to love me. Perhaps one day you'll have the courage to provide a genuine explanation. I believe you owe us that much. I'm uncertain if I can ever fully trust or commit myself to another woman again. It's a sad reality, but one that I must come to terms with. The story serves as a reminder of the complexity of human relationships, the power of forgiveness, and the necessity of taking responsibility for one's actions. Ultimately, while Henry and Polly's lives will never be the same, both can find a path to reconciliation with the past and new hope for the future. Story 2 To start from the beginning, she and I have been together for over 10 years, but we have been married for 7. We met while we were in high school, and we had been together ever since. She was the only woman that I'd ever been with, and I thought that I was the only man she'd ever been with. We've had a good life together. We have raised three children, we own our own home, and we even have a vacation home in Florida that we go to every summer. 
It was almost like we were living the American dream. As we've gotten older and as we've been focused on work and the kids, our sex life has sort of diminished. It wasn't completely inactive, but it wasn't as vibrant as either of us probably hoped it could be. She was always exhausted after taking care of the kids and after long days in the office. I was also tired that I started to notice that she was acting off. She had never been someone to care a lot about her physical appearance. I thought she was naturally beautiful, and I loved everything about her. She didn't have to wear makeup around me, she didn't have to dress nicely. I thought she was stunning with a clean face and sweatpants. However, she started going to the gym. She was petite, and after three kids, she had more curves, and I guess she wanted to try to lose that weight. I cannot stress enough that I never encouraged her to go, she was my wife, and I loved her. The changes in her body were from carrying our children inside of her. I didn't mind them. On top of that, she was dressing up more. She was wearing nice dresses and newer clothes. It reminded me of what she wore when we first started dating. I asked her about it, and she just told me that it was to help her feel more confident in herself. I took that explanation to heart. She had never done anything to make me think otherwise, so I assumed she just needed a little boost. That a few weeks after we had that conversation, I noticed that she was very secretive with her phone. I had read way too many other Reddit stories to feel comfortable with knowing how sketchy she was being with her phone. So, thinking we had a good communication line between us, I asked her about it. She told me that I was overreacting and that she wasn't doing anything on her phone. I didn't want to ask her to see it because I didn't want to cause an argument about not trusting her. She unlocked it and handed it to me, but I thought that was enough, so I just shook my head and apologized. Point one night, she told me that she was going to a book club that a local bookstore was hosting and left. I thought that she might be gone for maybe two hours. She didn't come back until four hours later. When I asked her where she was, she just told me she got some drinks with a couple of the girls after. Out of curiosity, I checked the bookstore's website and found out that they didn't have a book club meeting on the calendar that I'd had enough of her lies, so I figured if she wasn't going to tell me the truth, I would find it. My gut was telling me there was something wrong. I looked online and found a private investigator who I reached out to via email, and they agreed to take on my case. About a week later, she came back to me with the exact same story about the book club. I emailed the investigator and told him right away about the chance to catch her, so he jumped on the opportunity to see what she was doing that I stayed home anxiously awaiting any news from the investigator. My wife came home over four hours later. Not long after, I got a phone call from the investigator, so I excused myself and took the call outside. He told me that he followed my wife to a house where a man greeted her, kissing her on the lips when he did, and they both stayed inside for several hours. He was able to look up the owner of the house, and he had a name. Furthermore, when he did a search for the man online, he was able to find pictures he posted on a kink forum. The more he looked into his followers, people reacting to his posts, and she found a profile that belonged to my wife that I was completely shocked and heartbroken. On top of that, I was alarmed at how she would meet some random man off the internet and ruin our marriage by being with him. I needed to see what was going on between them exactly, so I waited for my wife to go to sleep, and I logged into her computer to try to get into the account. As luck would have it, she was logged in already, so I didn't have to do much hacking that I didn't know if the man she had gone to sleep with was the only one, but there were many other explicit message chains between her and strange men. I gathered screenshots of the most explicit parts, especially the parts where she had been sending pictures of herself to these men. There was no chance of reconciliation after this. She had thrown away our marriage for some meaningless fling. It was unforgivable that we had a family reunion coming up in a couple of weeks, so I thought that would be the best time to tell her about the news. If she was going to throw away our marriage, I was going to make sure she would regret it. The weeks passed, and I was just staying late at work and trying to avoid her as much as possible. It was hard to look at her knowing she had some of the conversations she did with those men that I had the divorce papers ready by the time the family reunion came around. All of the kids were playing in the pool or by the playset while the adults sat around the table and had a few drinks and ate some barbecue. I stood up, asking for everyone's attention, and I turned to my wife and told her I was leaving her. There was a gasp from the crowd, 
and I handed her the papers that I brought with me. I explained to her and everybody else watching that I found the messages she was exchanging online, and I had reason to believe that she had cheated on me with one of those men, she dragged me away from the table and was fuming because of how humiliated she was. She tried to explain to me that she had never cheated on me and that the messages were just from her curiosity about certain things. She swore up and down she never acted on anything, but then when I brought up her kissing another man at their house, she was silent. We went through filing for the divorce, and she didn't ask for anything from me. If she had, she wouldn't have been awarded it because she was the one who cheated. The divorce was entirely her fault. She ended up moving in with her grandma and helping her get around. We have joint custody of the kids, but they tend to want to spend more time with me. My private investigator was able to do some digging on the man as well. As it turned out, he was married and had several children of his own. I considered not getting involved, but it was the right thing to do. I found his wife, and I showed her some of the evidence of their affair, and she ended up leaving him. She kept the house, she kept the kids, and she's getting spousal support from him now that I'm trying to figure out how to get back into the dating scene. I've only dated one woman, and it ended pretty badly. The story of divorce after a partner's infidelity underscores the importance of self-respect, readiness for change, and seeking happiness in new endeavors. The protagonist demonstrated strength, empathy, and determination to protect their own well-being, as well as to help others in difficult times. Life after divorce may be challenging, but with optimism, support from loved ones, and openness to new opportunities, they can recover and find happiness. Story 3 My wife and I met in college, both young and full of dreams. Sparks flew instantly, and before we knew it, we were inseparable. Fast forward a bit, and we've been together for a solid 12 years. We have two beautiful kids, a cozy home we call our own, and a bond that seemed unbreakable. My wife has always been a bit of a health nut. She is very passionate about clean living. She eats a plant-based lifestyle, works out religiously, and enforces a lot of these rules on our children so they can be healthy. I wasn't like that at all before we met. In fact, I grew up very poor in a food desert in America, so I wasn't used to eating organic, fresh foods like she was. When we got together, I made some adjustments to my lifestyle, but there was a bit of compromise between us because I am unable to have a completely plant-based diet for my own health reasons. I work a mostly sedentary job in an office, though I do try to go for long walks or jog when I can. My wife, however, works as a personal trainer and nutritionist at a nearby gym that offers a lot of specialty classes for the members. She had been there for years and was almost a staple of the gym to a lot of the older clients that I never had a reason to worry about what she was doing at work before. My wife was hot, and I knew a lot of guys that came there to work out were probably hitting on her, but I trusted her. One day, she came home from work exhausted and annoyed. I asked about what was bothering her, and she told me that they hired a new trainer that was completely inept at their job. On top of her normal classes, they were having her train him on how to train others. It just seemed redundant, and she was pretty annoyed that they just didn't hire somebody who was capable. The first few days that she was training this new hire, she would come home and complain about how annoying he was and how it seemed like he wasn't actually paying attention to her while she was training him. But sooner or later, that complaining stopped. I didn't necessarily notice it at first, she just stopped talking about him. A few weeks after he started, we were at dinner, and I asked her how it was going with him. She seemed surprised that I asked, but she just shrugged it off and said that he's teaching his own class now, and sometimes she has to sit in on them to make sure he's up to par. It seemed like she started acting off just out of the blue. She was spending more time at the gym, wearing skimpier clothes, and being distant and secretive. I had a feeling that there was something wrong between us, but I didn't know how to ask. As time went on, I only noticed things getting worse, so I bit the bullet and just outright asked her if there was something going on that I didn't know about. She laughed at me and told me that I was being silly for thinking something was happening. She loved me, and she wouldn't hurt me. It felt good to hear that reassurance when I had been somewhat insecure about our relationship in the weeks prior, for a few days, things were different, and it felt like she was being more aware of how she was acting around me but then things just reverted back to how they were. 
I got really concerned when she told me that she was going to be teaching some evening classes at the gym. Ever since we had the kids, we had both been firm with our jobs about how we wouldn't be working any nights because we wanted to spend time with our family. We actually ended up having a huge argument about that because I felt like she had made a huge decision without me. But she told me that it was only going to be for a few months and it wasn't every night, so I just accepted it. She had been teaching that class for about two weeks. One night after she had made dinner, I noticed that she left her phone behind before she left. I told my oldest child to keep a close eye on the younger one so I could quickly run it over to the gym so she wouldn't be without it. When I got there, it was practically empty. There were a few other members on the machinery, but it was clear that there was no class taking place. As I said, my wife had been working there for 12 years, so I knew the workers pretty well. I explained to the front desk worker that I had my wife's phone, but they told me that she wasn't there. That seemed strange, she told me she had a class, so I believed she was there. They told me that they could have been wrong, but they hadn't seen her all night. They gave me the go-ahead to go look through the employee section that I walked back and made my way through the maze of lockers to find the offices and break room. I didn't see her anywhere there. It was clear to me then that she had lied to me about going to the gym. All of the feelings and worries had come back, and I didn't know what to do, then it hit me. I was holding her phone in my hands. I hadn't even thought about going through it before, but it was clear to me that I needed to. I looked through it and found videos, pictures, and explicit details about her affair with the new trainer. I was absolutely shocked by what I'd seen. I had my suspicions, but confirming them felt like I was being stamped in the chest. When I finally got back to my senses, I screenshotted a bunch of the messages and sent them to myself before deleting them from her phone. The closer I looked at some of the pictures, I could see that they had been sleeping together at the gym. My wife loved her job almost as much as she loved our kids, it truly meant the world to her. She had taken my happiness away, so I was going to take it from her too. I knew her boss. So I contacted him and told him about what I had discovered. When I told him they had been sleeping together at the gym, he was disgusted. He was shocked that his employees would do something like that. I know it was a hasty decision to tell her boss before I even told her, but it was the right thing to do. I went back home and went to bed, intending to ignore my wife completely. The next day, I got home from work, and my wife was there, completely distraught. She told me that she was let go from work, and she had no idea why. But I had a strong suspicion that if her boss fired her, they would have told her exactly why. She was clearly still trying to lie to me. I took that as an opportunity to elaborate on her recent termination. I told her all about what I had discovered and how I called her boss to tell him that they had been having sex at the job, she was shocked that I knew, but all I did was tell her that it was over between us. She begged me not to go through with that. She didn't have a job to support herself or the kids, and she didn't want to be without me. I told her that I'd made up my mind and that she wouldn't have to worry about supporting the kids because I was going to try to get custody of them. We ended up going through with the divorce. Both she and the trainer were fired from their job and forced to work elsewhere because my wife was fired for sleeping with somebody else on the job. It was difficult for her to use the only employment she had for the past 12 years on her resume, so it was difficult for her to land another one. Eventually, she did find a job but it paid about a third of what she was making before. I got full custody of the kids, and she has visitation with them every weekend and on some holidays. She's living with her mom and stepdad now while she tries to figure out a way to save money for her own place. As a result of your wife's deceit and betrayal of trust, you decided to divorce. You took custody of the children and sought support to cope with the emotional aftermath of this decision. Your wife and her former trainer lost their jobs due to their behavior. Now you and your children must adapt to a new reality and seek ways to heal and begin anew.